Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're actually gonna be out in the garden planting bulbs, but I wanted to start here in the studio because that's where I had all of my bulbs. It's nice and cool in here. So I figured since it took me so long to get around to planting all of these, they would do better in here, which they all still look really good. It's just kind of a weird time to be out. And it's actually very strange outside today. We're expecting a storm tonight. In fact, we just had a storm warning. Uh, one county over from us is uh, expecting golf ball size hail, uh, 50 mile an hour winds. And if the storm can maintain its intensity, they said we can expect a little bit of that here. Hopefully not. We've never seen hail that big here. Um, so so I'm thinking we'll probably miss the bulk of the storm, but it's like really overcast and it's kind of, it feels like the calm before. It's just really weird. So anyway, I feel like bulb planting is a good thing to do because hail can't damage bulbs. So here's my spread. I'm really hoping that the bulbs in the bags are still okay. Some of them were like trying to break free from their bag and some look pretty quiet. So it may be a little bit of a mixed bag results. Uh, in terms of whether or not they're still alive. They've been in these bags for a long time. Um, I've got calla lilies here, cannas. These right here are the Asiatic lilies. We've got oriental lilies here. These are the hardy gladiolus we'll be planting. And then we've got like lily hybrids and uh, trumpet lily right there. I actually haven't planted any of these types of lilies in our garden. We do have a couple of varieties in the back formal garden that were here when we moved in and I absolutely love them. I feel like they're just a solid, they're a solid performer in our garden and I never really have to mess with them, which I love. I just cut them back every year um, when they're all done, you know, in the fall and kind of clean them up and that's pretty much it. So uh, kind of a few basic differences between the lilies. So we've got like the Asiatic lilies, which I believe are like native to several different areas in Asia and you can find them in different um, heights, like for anywhere from one to five or six feet. I mean, it just kind of depends on the variety. Like I have one variety, today that gets like two to three feet tall and another variety that gets close to four feet tall. So it just kind of depends there. Um, they're early blooming, they're hardy, they aren't fussy. They don't really care about soil type so long as it's well draining. I appreciate that in the plant. Asiatic lilies, unlike oriental lilies, don't have a fragrance. So if that's something that bothers you, which I feel like especially if you planted them in mass, it might be a little bit overwhelming. I mean, because lilies can be a super strong smelling thing flower out in the garden so oriental lilies are native to um, japan actually and they'll range in size as well i think anywhere from like one and a half or two feet all the way up to six to eight feet uh, i didn't check the heights on mine oh good <laughs> i was kind of like oh no did i order one that gets eight feet tall no mine get about uh, three to four feet tall it looks like oriental lilies have huge blooms very highly fragranced their leaves are a little bit thicker like bolder than the asiatic lilies uh, and they typically start blooming after asiatic blooms asiatic lilies are done blooming um, so it's kind of fun to have both so that you can kind of have a graduation of bloom there and then of course different colors and kind of a different structure of plant and i do have one variety of trumpet lily as well which is very like you plant them similarly um, they have a very light sweet fragrance and the variety I have is called Lady Alice Turk's Cap um, and they'll get upwards of five feet tall and they can have up to 20 blooms on one stem which is amazing and they have kind of these recurved petals that are really gorgeous so I think that actually might be the tallest one I have here nope Nope, I've got an orange planet lily tree. I forgot, it gets three to eight feet. And that one can actually handle a little bit more um, dense soil, like it can handle more clay soil. So in a nutshell, I feel like lilies are just a really easy kind of low maintenance plant to put in the ground, easy to plant. They like a fold apart sun kind of situation and they can just handle so many different soil types. I feel like they would be good for most gardens. Um, I'm gonna be planting most, well, I think most all the lilies in the ground because they wanna get so big, they would require a pretty good, sturdy, heavy pot to hold up their you know size especially the ones that may need to be staked um, so those will go in the ground and then I've got hardy glads which I've never planted before which I think I'm gonna plant in containers so I've got two varieties here I have Las Vegas hardy gladiolus which are yellow with a red edge and then I've got nymph hardy gladiolus um, which look a little bit more like these are a little bit of a weird shape these look like a traditional gladiolus corm right there, but these are actually a zone four through nine. They're really good at naturalizing. Um, they only get 18 to 24 inches tall, so I thought they'd be really fun to plant in a container. These usually bloom early summer, so I'm not sure, you know, since I'm planting them so late, I'm not sure what to expect. 
the Las Vegas variety blooms usually mid to late summer. So anyway, I just think I'm gonna grab two pots and just pack each pot full of those. Do you like the cozy coop in the background? <laughs> That's Benjamin's entertainment when he's out here when I'm working. Um, okay, so what I think I'm gonna do is we're just gonna go out to the garden. I'm gonna put all these in the back of a cart uh, and we'll just go to each location and I'll kind of go over planting instructions and then we'll look at each individual variety as I go uh, today and kind of uh, we'll throw some pictures up on the screen so you guys can see some pretties. So this is where I'm gonna plant all of the callas. I already have the callas the Be My Main Squeeze. That's the variety I planted in an earlier video right here in this container and they're doing really well. I planted five bulbs. One of them already has a bloom, but they're looking really good. So I think that the other ones will like this position. They get a lot of strong morning light and then a little protection in the afternoon. So I have the container here with the Be My Prince. We're gonna have some hammering noise, you guys, for a while. They're working on the footings there, in case you're wondering. And then we've got Be My Heart right here, right next to the pretty pistachio hookahs. I'm just loving that color this year. And then over here, I've got two pots, one with the Be My First Love, the pink, and the Be My Sunshine yellow. Okay, guys, as a quick refresher, this is what a calla lily rhizome looks like you want to plant them with the smooth side facing down the nubby side facing up so all the nubby points here are growth points and if you can see i'm not sure in this camera we were having some issues with it focusing the other day i don't know hopefully you can see that but there's like a brighter spot a green spot it's already starting to push a little bit of growth so i'm just going to plant them a few inches down in this pot i'm going to sprinkle a little bit of starter fertilizer in here and then we're just going to cover over them with soil are done I'm moving on to hardy glads I'm gonna plant the nymph variety which has more of like a white and pink look to it up near our kitchen walkway area I've got a pot up there and then I've got the same pot um, that I'm gonna plant the Las Vegas variety and these are the weird shaped bulbs right here but you can clearly see whoop, the growth point um, so here's another one right here that's just like long but you can see the growth point right here Anyway, I'm just gonna jam these in the pots. I'm gonna plant them pretty thick. Uh, the Las Vegas variety gets 24 inches and I think the same with the Nymph, but this variety has a little bit more of the orange, not orange, yellow and red kind of coloring. And I have a good spot to put them, but it's not quite ready yet. So I'm just gonna pot them up and just leave them here on the brick patio until I'm ready, that spot's ready. So this is the pot I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna plant them about midway, it says about four inches deep, but I'm just gonna cluster them as thickly as I can in this pot. I'm excited. I think that these uh, glads will be beautiful in this container right here. You can see kind of in reference to where we're at. I popped an umbrella up yesterday to shade the hookarellas because it was over 100 and the poor things. I think it was a little bit too much for them until they're established. But anyway, I'm excited for this. Now we get to move on to the lilies. It is. Cool, it is. <gasps> see, look at those fantastic lilies. Aren't those beautiful? Those were here when we moved in and they're in their full glory right now. Aren't those pretty, Benjamin? I like them. So I would say we could plant them over in this spot, which has remained largely untouched because it's been such a pain to water. Um, we've been trying to figure out the water system, but I did plant 25 white dahlias in this space. And it does look, I planted them late. It looks like they are starting to pop through the soil. So. I think we'll wait on this area. 
All right, guys, so we're actually out in the cut flower garden. I feel a little bit bad because when I initially put this order in, I had intended on putting a lot of these lilies in the area around the gazebo before I knew the gazebo was leaving. It was before we had decided to put in a greenhouse and all those flower beds are gonna be retooled. So Benjamin and I, we went around and kind of looked for areas to put these, but I don't just wanna plunk them anywhere. So I figured just lining them up in the cut flower garden would be a really fun kind of solution for now because they'll be easy to access. Uh, we'll be able to come in and dig them up easily and then put them in a spots where we actually want them out in the garden. Plus many of them are really good cut flowers anyway. So kind of makes sense. So before I get them all in the ground, which I'm just gonna aug holes, they go about six inches deep, roughly 10 to 18 inches apart, depending on the variety. Um, since they're just gonna be out here for a short time, I could go every 12 inches if I wanted to probably, um, as just a rule, no matter what variety they are, and they would probably be fine. And our drip is every, it's spaced out every six inches on our drip tape, so it's gonna work out great. But I wanna run through all these varieties. We'll throw a picture on the screen so you can see hopefully what we're gonna see later on this season. All right, so first off, we have our three Asiatic lily varieties, all of which are zone three through eight. They need to be planted six inches deep and roughly 12 to 18 inches apart. These right here are the eyeliner lilies. Look at these, they already have buds. I don't know how these are gonna grow. These might all grow really wonky and weird. I don't know, but I think they'll like being in the ground. These are gorgeous. White blooms with a chocolate brown margin that looks like eyeliner and then little chocolate brown spots toward the center. Can't remember how tall these get, 40 inches? Oh no, two to three feet tall. Then we've got the pink giant lily, which is kind of like a light salmon pink with chocolate brown to black spots all over on them. 40 inches tall, gorgeous flowers. And then we've got a uh, variety called Easy Dream, which grows about three feet tall. And this one they describe as being cherry pink with a soft creamy yellow inner uh, throat with chocolate spots. Really looking forward to seeing what this one looks like. And then we have a hybrid lily called Night Rider, which has six inch near black flowers. Um, 35 inches tall is how big this one's supposed to get. These were the most sketchy bulbs that I have. I feel like this was just left in the bag for too long. My fault. I'm gonna plant them anyway because you just never know. Sometimes they're resilient, but I was looking forward to seeing blooms on that one. And then we've got the Lady Alice Turk's Cap Trumpet Lily, which we already talked about inside. They've got the recurved um, white petals with yellow orange centers. Uh, really beautiful. This one's four to five feet tall, so I know I may have to come out with some stakes. However, I really don't expect any of these to grow as tall as they, ca they could. Then we've got our two oriental lily varieties, which have the high fragrance. There's one called Rose Lily Mixture, which the picture of this one is gorgeous. It's a mix of colors like white and various pink uh, tones with double flowers three to four feet tall. And I believe these are a zone three through eight too. And then we have Tiger Moon. These are absolutely gorgeous. They grow about 40 inches tall. The blooms are up to nine inches wide. White with kind of a yellow stripe kind of down the center, but then uh, maroon and orange speckles. They are really beautiful. They almost have a glow quality to them. And then we have the orange planet lily trees. I have no idea what to expect out of these. It says they can grow anywhere from three to eight feet tall. That is huge. I can feel, or I can see some growth in there. Uh, orange flowers with orange yellow edges. So out here in the cut flower garden, you can see uh, this poor space has been so wind blown, but you know what? Things have kind of rebounded way more than I thought they would. I haven't even reseeded this first row here and you can see, do you remember that huge windstorm right after, like immediately after I seeded this stuff? Uh, everything is looking so good. Like it's patchy, but I'm thrilled. Like this is the Delft Blue Nigella right here. We can see some color starting to form here. I did plant the bunny tails grass and do you remember how sad those looked when I planted them? They're starting to put on some, like some thickness now. And as we go down, we've got more of the nigella, some cress, um, the orlea. The white finch orlea looks absolutely gorgeous. Look at this. Pollinators all over it. And then our larkspurs, look at these. They're starting to, they're all budded up and starting to put on a little bit of color. Then of course we have a bunch of cabbage, celery, a bunch of onions. 240 collective feet of potatoes here. Some gorgeous stock. Let me hop over here. 
stock is looking beautiful and I've got more stock coming so it was kind of like a su succession crop the mahogany splendor hibiscus there and then the next row is the clear one I just seeded zinnias right here some of them are up uh, and then I've got snapdragons in the first two rows so this is the row we're going to be lining them up in and then I will be planting cosmos in the rest of the row and I don't expect the potatoes to stick around for too much longer they are just starting to like most of them are done blooming so the plants themselves will start looking kind of sad and they'll start uh, flopping over and then we'll start testing for uh, readiness really like this color of stock right there that's pretty okay i'm going to keep these together by group and kind of by size i'll um, do asiatic and i'll start with the smallest size and work my way up to the highest size and so forth here we go So this is what a lily bulb looks like for those of you who haven't seen one before. They're usually shaped pretty much like this. That's how all of the ones I've planted today look. Some of which have green growth already, so it's easy to tell which way to plant facing up. But most of the time you can locate the roots at the bottom and you know that those face down and the pointy side faces up. So we're just going six inches down. The lilies go about a little over halfway down this row. Now we have three or four days at 111 on our forecast. So because these lilies were in the bags inside kind of a more dim room, I do need to go along and make sure that if some of their growth points are still sticking out of the soil, I need to cover them up, just mound up the soil and protect them because those will fry, for sure will fry. Here's another one. So I'm just gonna go do that all the way down this row to make sure they're all protected and then we'll get them all watered in. And then the last thing we have to plant are the cannas. So we're over at the side of the greenhouse. These are the 2022 recipes for proven winners. They're doing really good. I'm really loving these blends of flowers. But this is also where I put the one canna I planted in a video earlier this season because I knew it would be protected from the wind. I could hook it up on drip and just see how it does. Um, now in this second container that I just brought out, I think I forgot to turn the camera on. Anyway, <laughs> I brought it out from behind the barn, filled it with soil, that's all I've done so far. And then I lined the rhizomes up on top. I'm gonna try putting five, all five of the rhizomes because a couple of them are really small. And I thought it would be interesting to see how quickly five will fill this container in a season versus one. Like, is it worth it to go ahead and pack it full with something like this that's not grown yet? or is it smarter to just, just do the one? Like, will it grow fast enough to fill it up? I think it'll be a really fun experiment. So with these right here, you only go like one to two inches underneath the soil surface. So I've already kind of pre-moistened the soil here. We're gonna set the rhizomes. You can see the growth point right here. So you just set it in there with the growth point facing up and cover it over. So again, go one to two inches down. You set the rhizome to where the growth point is facing up, cover it over. And I just have the pot kind of uh, divided as best as I could with the five, to accommodate the five rather. There we go. Boy, they just don't look like much, do they, when you plant them? I actually think that these, see the blooms on these? They'll be really pretty. It's called Cleopatra in this kind of more bronze mustard colored pot because I think that that will be a gorgeous like late summer, early fall show. Cannas can handle or would prefer really consistent moisture too. And I would say the lilies like average moisture and the uh, callas I watered in today just to settle the soil and I probably won't water them much until I start seeing some growth above the soil surface because those I find are a little bit easier to rot. Anyway, I'm really excited that all the bulbs are in the ground or in containers, planted. Even if they're not planted where they're gonna end up forever, uh, I think that any longer in those bags inside and they probably would have been at a point where I wouldn't have had any growth, they probably would have had to been tossed. So anyway, um, we will be reporting back, hopefully with some, some success stories on these bulbs later on this season. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one.